Today we're going to talk about a percent proportion. If you remember from last year, a proportion is a statement of equality of two or more ratios. So since we're dealing with percents, one of those ratios is going to be a percent. For percent proportion, there are three different um, variables that you need to keep in mind. The first term is percentage. Now, don't get this confused with percent. It's not the same thing. Percentage is going to be a number that is compared to another number, and we're going to compare that number to the big B, which is base. Base is the number to which the percentage is compared, and this will make sense in just a few minutes. The last two variables are interchangeable. There's a little r and a big R, and they both refer to rate. And the rate is nothing more than the ratio of a number to 100. Okay, now that you know what the variables stand for, this is how you set up your proportion. You have the percentage over the base, which is equal to rate over 100. And this proportion is your percentage. When the question you're, you're trying to solve asks you to solve for the percent, you're going to use this equation. So you would fill in your percentage and the base, and your variable r would say r because you're solving for the percent. But sometimes when you're solving an equation, they may give you the percent. And if they give you the percent, you want to use this equation because you can fill in the percent here and then either solve for the percentage or the base. And this is just a reminder, you use a small r when over 100 and a big R when it is not over 100. Now your example problems are always going to fit pretty much the same format, and that is P is R of B. Now you should remember is represents equals and of represents multiplication. And this fits into our proportion um, exactly that way. P is R of B. So we're cross-multiplying the R and the B, so that's, of does represent multiplication there. If you're using the other format, P over B equals R, it's going to be slightly different, really doesn't indicate multiplication per se, but that's the operation that you should do. So let's take a look at an example. Um, here I've drawn 27 pieces of candy. Now, 27 represents our base. Our base is always going to be the largest number represented. What I want to know is, of those 27 pieces of candy, how many are orange? So, the orange candies represent the percentage of the base. So, I've counted them up, and I have 8 pieces of orange candy. So in order to solve this, I'm going to put this into my proportion. Here's 8, which represents my percentage. 27 is my base, and I want to find out what R is. So I'm trying to find the percent, not the percentage, the percent of um, orange candy out of the total. So the first step I'm going to do is cross-multiply. 8 times 100 gives me 800. 27 times R gives me 27R. The next step is to divide both sides by 27. So R will equal approximately 29.6%. This has been rounded to the nearest tenth. Do not round to the nearest whole number unless specified by your teacher. These problems that you're going to be working on are really no more difficult than problems you've worked on in the past. Now you're just looking for the verbiage. You're looking for the percentage, the rate, and the base. And if you keep that structure, P is R of B, in mind, it's going to be far easier to set up your uh, proportions. Okay, you're going to have two on your own problems for today. The first one is find 15% of 60. So remember, you're setting up a proportion, so you're going to have a ratio on each side. One of those is going to be R over 100 for your percent, 
and then you have percentage over your base. So now it's up to you to fill in the correct numbers for each variable. Okay, for your second problem, you are trying to solve for the percent. So the question is asking, 70 is what percent of 280? So again, you're setting up a proportion. You have your percent on one side and your percentage over your base. 